How do municipalities manage water infrastructure before the smart cover solution came to market? Well, the problem really is a big one. There's a million miles of pipeline that are underground, and if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And the problem is that uh, if things are going on underground that are bad, people, people don't know about them. So what they do is they send people out in trucks, open up manholes, look down and see if water's flowing properly, and they make a decision about whether or not there's a problem in the pipe. Just by looking down there, a sort of rule of thumb decision is made? Yeah, is it pooled up? Is it, is it starting to, to uh, perhaps create a backup or not? Uh, that's kind of what happens, and all of a sudden they, they make a decision. The problem with that, of course, is that you can't really tell if there's something going on, and you may not be at the right time. You may miss the right time, and all of a sudden you'll have a backup when you have a, when you have a, a rainstorm. So. And smart cover comes along and solves that solution by deploying sensors everywhere. How do those sensors work and where does the data get aggregated? So we put little sensors underneath manhole covers uh, and they look at the water levels using ultrasonic and they measure the water levels going up and down continuously. Effectively, it's an EKG for a sewer. We're looking at the water levels going up and down and it's like looking at somebody's heart. And if that heart pattern has a problem with it, uh, you can fix it and, uh, and, and make sure that you don't have a heart attack. And that's the same thing going on with sewers. So we can look at these patterns, detect small changes, and then make the proper decisions based on those. Well, and a lot of this infrastructure, Greg, is aging. Is there a, an element of this of detecting faults and how do you manage that? That, that's a great question. Uh, the, most of the infrastructure put in the United States was put in post-World War II. It's getting to be 50, 60, 70 years old. And again, out of sight, out of mind. If nothing's going wrong, we'll leave it there. But that's why you see a lot of leaks all the time. You see sewer overflows and that sort of thing. So what we can do, again, is tell how these pipes are aging. Uh, in fact, we've caught many times where the pipes have collapsed, and instead of a spill happening, we were able to tell our customers uh, in real time uh, they, can, they can go fix the problem before they have an overflow. And when an overflow happens today, there's all these downstream costs. What is the return on investment that your customers are seeing leveraging the smart cover system? Depends on how much damage could have, ha could have happened. In the case of uh, one situation in Escondido, where, where we are based, uh, the utility manager told us that we could have saved them $6 million uh, based on one of the spills that could have happened there. What do municipalities need to do in terms of budget planning to incorporate the smart cover solution? Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, the budget planning is based on uh, how much money they spend cleaning their pipes, for example. And one thing we can do is help them uh, uh, clean their pipes in a much more uh, efficient manner based on the data that's coming out. So this is like sewers are cleaned on a regular schedule? So whether typically, they're... they have schedules that are monthly or bi-monthly or once every whether quarter. Whether it's used or... Based on uh, whether there's a problem or not. And if you're a good manager, you'll be cleaning a lot because that way you'll keep your, your sewers from overflowing. So what we can tell them is you go out there when it's needed to be cleaned. Again, it's almost like having a robot that's sitting there watching all the time continuously. So is cleaning being done too frequently? Does that reduce the life? It does reduce the life of the, of the pipelines because you're using uh, high pressure hoses that, that, uh, uh, that could damage the pipe. A lot of times there's roots in the pipe and they cut those, pi those roots out with, with uh, rotating uh, um, knives that uh, cause very serious damage to the pipeline. Is there improved financing prospects for a municipality by taking advantage of these types of technologies? Uh, one case we have is San Antonio Water System. They, they took our system and deployed it at places where they were cleaning on a monthly basis. Uh, they were cleaning uh, 120 times a year at these 10 locations. When they put our systems in, they ended up cleaning seven times. That was a reduction of 94%. And they're estimating they're going to be saving $4,000 per year per site because they can monitor their system and clean when they only need to. Are there portals or applications, mobile applications, that the technicians use that they didn't use before? And what's involved in training technicians to use your system? It's like an Internet of Things solution. We have a sensor, we have communications, we have analysis that goes on, and then, the, then that information ends up either on their phone or their laptop or their computer, and they can make decisions based on what's going on there. So it's very simple for them to use. A lot of the workforce has been using that old world solution of driving the trucks around and looking. What's been the adoption accept and acceptance of these new technologies? For the most part, people have, uh, have thought it's a good idea because they don't like sending guys out in trucks when it's raining, when it's dark, when there's problems. So from a safety standpoint, from a gasoline standpoint, a carbon footprint standpoint, our solution provides a good answer for all those things.